Welcome back to 19th and 20th century philosophy. I'm Matt Brown, um, and I'm here to talk to you today about Gottlob Frege. Frege was a German philosopher, born in 1848, died in 1925. Uh, Frege was um, known as a um, logician, mathematician, and philosopher. He worked primarily at the University of Jena, right? Um, which is in modern-day Germany. Um, he's known uh, sometimes as the grandfather of analytic philosophy. And let me just mark a, a strange little note there. Sometimes the distinction is drawn between analytic philosophy and continental philosophy, and yet Frege is coming from continental Europe, Germany, where many of the other continental philosophers come from. It's kind of strange. So as I said, Frege is known for his work in logic, mathematics, and philosophy. Uh, he was particularly interested in um, formal logic. Uh, he created the first modern formal predicate logic, as well as the first fully axiomatic uh, logical system. Um, within mathematics, he was particularly interested in the foundations of mathematics. So um, uh, what is the sort of basis of mathematical truth and knowledge? Um, and there he was a defender of uh, what's called logicism. He attempted to ground the um, foundations of mathematics in logic, in formal logic. Uh, this is something that Bertrand Russell and Alfred North Whitehead would also try to do uh, a little bit later on. Um, and uh, ultimately, it's a project that's seen as a, as a failure uh, for reasons that came about in the later part of the 20th century with the mathematician um, Goodell, Kurt Goodell, um, and his incompleteness theorems. In both logic and mathematics, uh, Frege was a defender of what's called anti-psychologism, right? So he was uh, strongly opposed to a philosophical trend of the late 19th century to attempt to provide foundations for things like logic and mathematics in psychology, right? I think we've talked before about how psychology became a really important part of the philosophical scene in the late 19th century. And uh, uh, it was, you know, and by psychology, I mean, of course, empirical or experimental psychology. Um, and, uh, there was a reaction against that uh, it, towards the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, and Frege was perhaps one of the import, most important figures in that area. Another very important figure in the anti-psychologism movement, perhaps more well-known at the time, was a philosopher by the name of Edmund Husserl, who we'll uh, talk about next. Husserl is the, um, is the founder of the School of Phenomenology, um, and also considered, therefore, uh, a father or grandfather of continental philosophy. Um, but, but Husserl, like Frege, was uh, really interested in the early part of his career, in, uh, particularly in the foundations of mathematics. Um, he wrote early works on the foundations of arithmetic. Um, he was also interested, to some extent, in logic. Uh, one of his major, uh, most ambitious works was called The Logical Investigations. And in his most early writings, Husserl is a, is a proponent of psychologism. He's a proponent of the idea that we should found our knowledge of arithmetic and mathematics more generally in psychology, right? So you want to know what a number is. You want to know how we know things about numbers, what the truth about numerical knowledge and arithmetic knowledge is. Um, early Husserl said, you got to look to psychology. These are psychological functions. Um, Frege critiqued Husserl, uh, wrote a critique and published it about Husserl's uh, philosophy of arithmetic. Um, Frege and Husserl also wrote letters to each other and shared drafts of work with each other. And Frege convinced Husserl that psychologism was untenable. It's a big twip prop airplane up there. And Frege convinced Husserl that psychologism was untenable. And so in later work, Husserl also wrote 
and uh, against psychologism. It was part of the anti-psychologism movement. Um, so there's a significant influence between Frege and Husserl. And I'll talk about that more uh, in the video on Husserl. The last part of Frege's philosophy that I'll talk about is his philosophy of language. So in trying to suss out uh, formal logic and the nature of logic, and trying to ground mathematics in logic, Frege found that uh, in many ways he needed to understand meaning uh, and, and uh, symbolic language, the nature of language in a more general sense. Um, so this led Frege into investigations of the nature of concepts, the nature of meaning, uh, the nature of uh, the denotation or reference of terms. Um, and uh, that's something that Frege, perhaps even more influential than his work in mathematics today within philosophy, at least this philosophy, of, his philosophy of language uh, remains pretty important. So Frege's philosophy of language is motivated by a series of puzzles about the meaning of certain kinds of expressions. For example, um, Frege noticed that uh, the expression A is A, A equals A, or the expression, um, uh, let's say, 12 equals 12, or the expression um, Clark Kent is Clark Kent, these are all relatively trivial, um, meaningful, but uh, not very informative statements. They basically tell us that something is the same as itself. Right? On the other hand, there are there's a different kinds of um, similar statements that seem, that seem importantly different. So uh, statements like um, A equals B or three plus nine equals 12, or um, Clark Kent is Superman, that uh, unlike these statements seem to be different. They seem to be informative in a way that these statements are not. They seem to be, um, they seem to carry meaning that are not there in the statement, but that's puzzling for Frege, because, um, you know, if this statement is true, if A equals B is true, then A and B are just different names for the same thing. If 3 plus 9 equals 12 is true, then 3 plus 9 and 12 are just different ways of writing the same number. And if it's true that Clark Kent is Superman, then these are just different names for the same person. These all say that the same thing is identical to itself in just the way that these do. Right? So the fact that these seem to have a different meaning from these was a puzzle for Frege. Similarly, um, you might imagine a statement like, Lois Lane believes that, that Clark Kent is uh, clumsy might be true, but Lois Lane believes that Superman is lazy, that seems to be false, right? Given some, given what we know about La Lois Lane uh, before she knows that Clark Kent is Superman, right? She's gonna have different uh, beliefs about, about him, but how is it that these, that this statement can be true and this statement can be false when a part of the statement, right? This part here, these denote the same thing. These refer to the same person. Um, so how can the meaning of these two statements differ? This is the puzzle that motivates um, a, a significant uh, insight of Frege's philosophy of language. So what did Frege do to address this problem? Um, or these, or these puzzles, right? Um, on the one hand, you have, uh, you have sentences and expressions in which you have different terms substituted, um, but the terms refer to the same things, right? So what, what Frege did to address this problem is uh, he posited two dimensions to our understanding of meaning. On the one hand, 
you have reference, right? Uh, the reference of a term or concept is uh, its, its denotation, the object it refers to, the thing that uh, it, it denotes, right? So if it's a proper name, it's the person that, that, na that the name names. If it's a concept, right, it's the, it may be the type, the type of thing in the world that it refers to. Um, the other dimension, the second dimension of meaning is what Frege called sense. So the notion of sense um, has been somewhat more difficult for, uh, for Frege's interpreters to understand. The basic idea is that the sense of a concept or term is the meaning of that term um, in the sense of the, of the thought or representation that it expresses, right? So um, while the denotation of uh, Carol Danvers and Captain Marvel are the same, they refer to the same person, or they would in the world where, they, uh, where Carol Danvers and Captain Marvel exist, uh, they're, they're um, the sense of those terms is different. The representation or thought associated with Captain Marvel versus Carol Danvers is very different. Um, uh, similarly, the morning star and the evening star, even though they're the same star, um, are uh, the thought that we associate with those um, uh, terms is different. Um, and that is how um, the identity statements between two, ter two different terms with the same reference or denotation can still be meaningful. And similarly, that's how a statement like um, Bob is in love with Carol Danvers and Bob is in love with Captain Marvel can have different uh, truth values, right? Because in a, in a context like belief or love or desire, um, uh, the, um, it's the, it's the sense, it's the, it's the, the representation or, or thought associated with that term that, that matters and not just the reference by itself. Now, all that said, there's a really important caveat to the way I've been describing Frege's concept of sense. And that's, remember, I told you Frege is a, is an anti-psychologist, Right. That is, he 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 um, is against psychologistic understanding or interpretation of these key philosophical concepts, and that goes as much for the theory of meaning in philosophy of language as it does for his logic or foundations of mathematics work. So, um, strictly speaking, um, the the sense of a concept is not a thought in the psychological sense. It is rather the case that for Frege, there is um, an objective thought associated with every concept. Um, and uh, there is a kind of, if you like, platonic realm of ideas in which every concept uh, gets its, it, its, its objective sense. That at least is one way to interpret what Frege is saying, but it is a little difficult. Uh, naturally, these are the ideas in the, the essay on sense and reference that we'll be discussing uh, this week. And um, so there's a lot more to say about these core concepts and what they mean. Um, but that's a sort of introduction into thinking about sense and reference uh, in the context of, of Frege's life and works. Um, so I look forward to hearing what you think about these ideas um, uh, and uh, talking with you about them on Discord, uh, in class, uh, or in the comments of the video. I will see you again uh, uh, soon to talk about Edmund Husserl. Have a good night.